If I said, I want to ravage you, you wouldn't like that very much, would you? As a matter of fact, I looked it up in the dictionary, and it means to do harm or to do mischief. And yet, you and I are ravaged by the love of God. It's the kind of love that is not turned on and off easily. It stays on. It's the kind of love that is there when we do it exactly as it should be done. And it's the kind of love that is uh, present and positive and at work in our lives when we blow it completely. In Eugene O'Neill's book, The Ice Man Cometh, there's an interaction that we've talked about here across the years between the faithful wife and the totally unfaithful husband. And I mean, he really blows it. He messes it up in just about every way that you can imagine. And one day, when they're talking together, he says to her, you've got to stop loving me the way you're loving me. It's just killing me. (laughs) And what he's talking about is exactly what God's love in Christ is about. The kind of love that kills everything unworthy, everything ungodly, so that the worthy and the godly can come to life. To be ravaged by the love of God is to be put in the place where a man or a woman, whomever we may be, ought to be in terms of God's idea of things, in terms of God's sight and God's hope for you. And God's hope for me. Some time ago, Greg gave me a little Christmas book entitled Grace by Max. Um, And you all know a lot of his writings. And uh, what the devil is his last name? (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say Licado. Licado. Um, Isn't it wonderful to have a senior moment right in the middle of preaching? (laughs) And then I am a senior too, but that's okay. But it's amazing. There's, I wanted to uh, quote the whole paragraph uh, for you, just word for word. But here's what he says. You've heard about grace. You've heard about grace till it makes you sick. You've heard about grace until you're immune for it. But when's the last time grace has changed you? When's the last time grace has shaped you? When's the last time grace has emboldened you? When's the last time that grace has softened you? When is the last time that grace turned you from an, oh God, it's morning day, to thank God for the chance today? From a self-willed to a God-willed life. To be ravaged by love is to be saved by grace. And each one of us needs to know not only that it's an offer that is made, It's a reality that some who have allowed grace to become fully present in ourselves find new life, become new person, new man, new woman, new creature, new beginning. And it doesn't make any difference how many times you've heard it. It only matters when you become it, or even better, when it becomes yours. And so grace comes and knocks at the door of your heart. And grace has a voice. Grace says, who lives there? There was a time that we might have said, oh, Keith lives here. But in grace, you have the chance to say, Christ lives here. Keith, Christ, together. And then to be rescued, that's a deal. It's one of my favorite stories, and I tell it from time to time, over again. (laughs) But my Cajun uncle was a hunter extraordinary, and he would go out hunting no matter what the weather. And we got caught in bad weather one time and stranded, and the tide went away. And he was out in the mud with his boots on, you know, his Uh, tall boots and uh, we came to the edge of the water he was in the mud over here and uh, daddy said are you okay and he said I'm sinking (laughs) and daddy said which way and he said down you idiot (laughs) and daddy said 
let me help. And he said, okay, and how? And then he reached the oar out, the distance to close it, so he could get the end of the oar and uh, pull himself slowly toward us. And then he said, I can't come. And daddy said, why? And he said, I'm losing my boots. (laughs) I can't stand to lose those boots. They're good boots. And daddy said, boots or life? What do you choose? I'm looking to see if there's any children here. (laughs) Uncle Larry said, oh, hell, life. (laughs) It's not, not to be vulgar or expedient. It's the fact that each one of us are given a chance, an opportunity to be rescued from sin, to be rescued from self, to be rescued from darkness, to be rescued from all of those things that contribute to the brokenness of the world. And to become something of that man or that woman that becomes a peacemaker, a God lover, an other people lover, a respecter of all persons. You know, we give food out every Tuesday. We have a wonderful doctor. We have people who work to give IDs to those who don't have them. What a ministry. We have people that want to give a job to people that work hard on that kind of thing. But you know why we get together? We get together. I think God's calling somebody on the phone, but it's okay. Um, We get together for the purpose of creating respect for one another. For being able to call each other by name. To be able to say to each other the good stuff and the bad stuff that's going on. You know what's touching? I'm going tomorrow for my scans and for the chemo again. We don't know how it's going to come out. But I guarantee you, if I'm able to get there Tuesday, they'll stand around me and put their hands on me and pray for me. And some of them don't even know my name. But I'm their pastor. And I don't know all their names. But I am their pastor. John is too. And that's why we do it. Because we are rescuing one another from potential violence every single time we share a moment of respect. Every time we share a moment of decency and goodwill. And every time any one of us are kind to another person. All you can do is your best. And when you've done that, the rest belongs to God. And so, ravaged by love. I never thought about that. And Lakato says... Um, rescued by passion. Isn't that interesting to think that God has this passion to rescue? Uh, Want to get us out of the miry mud, you know, and then restored to justice. I said at the early service, I'll say now, I'm into a worldview that affirms relationships, how we should live toward God, how we should live toward one another. Black lives matter. And so do white lives. And no one need to be afraid to say it. And so do red lives and yellow lives. And all kinds of lives. One of the funny things that happens in our family is I don't like to kill bugs. Not all of the family agrees with that. (laughs) But they've got a life principle in them. Now, I've been able to compromise that with rats for some reason. (laughs) Excuse me. I hate to be base, but it's the truth, you know. But what, what more does God require of you, O oh man, O oh woman, than to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God? Two things that we've done. When that new life of love and rescue restores you, you become a person committed to the issues of justice. There's no question about it. Because there's something alive in you that was not alive in you before. Tara Storms had a daughter named Taylor who was killed in a tragic ski accident when she was 13. The family decided that they would give her usable organs and years later found out that a woman named Patricia White, that doesn't always happen. That anonymity is not always broken. But in this case it was. A name Patricia A lady named Patricia White had received that heart. They made an agreement to get together, and they all got together. And when they came into the house, the mom who had lost the daughter and the lady who had received a heart just held on to one another in absolute silence for a very long time. And then Patricia White said, just a minute. And she went into the other room and came back with a stethoscope. 
And she said, I know you'd like to hear this. And there they stood in total redemption in the presence of God, hearing the heart beat on. God will give us a new heart, not a self-willed heart, a God-willed heart. Oh God, make it so. Amen.